Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity here uh, to speak here because uh, this is clearly a very important issue, and um, it's going to be very important for those of you who aren't informed about it to inform yourself about it because there's a lot of misinformation floating around. Uh, the biggest misinformation is opponents of oil and gas drilling are using the term hydraulic fracturing and applying it to everything in terms of oil and gas construction. And that simply is false. That's just basically scare tactics to try to uh, stop oil and gas production because they've discovered that we're not running out of oil and gas. And so it's incumbent on you all to know what the facts are. Um, one couple quick clarifications I do want to bring up. One, New Jersey does not have a moratorium. Uh, the governor vetoed it. Uh, New York is uh, moving forward with their moratorium in terms of the uh, advisories that they have. And um, the other uh, clarification, when the USGS said, looked at the earthquake issue, it, was, it did not conclude that fracturing caused the earthquake. It was deep well injections, and that was what Arkansas was doing in terms of concerns about the disposal of deep well injections, that the, there may have been earthquake issues with that, but not fracturing itself. So I just want to clarify that a little bit. Uh, but going forward, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about what it is, and you'll see a, some repetitive slides, so I'll go through them pretty quickly. But um, what is it, what is it not? These are the plays around the country. This is a similar diagram to what you saw before, where basically you've got oil and gas um, opportunities. You've got gas opportunities in places like Arkansas, Texas, Pennsylvania, and so on. Oil potentially in uh, Eastern Ohio in terms of some of these formations. So there's a lot of opportunity out there in terms of what your states could get involved in up there. You've seen this before. The key aspect of it is that it's got to be done right in terms of oil and gas. The cementing and casing has to be done right. If it's not done right, you could have problems. And, our, and I'll go through the uh, things that we deal with as an industry in terms of how we go forward with that. Fracturing has been around for a very long time, since the 40s. In, or hydraulic fracturing. In fact, fracturing itself has been around for over 100 years. But 100 years ago, fracturing was dropping nitroglycerin down a borehole, uh, and that was a lot more exciting. You know, so uh, this just using water to fracture is a different technique, but we've been doing it for a very long time. So we've had over a million wells that have been fractured. Virtually almost all wells are. Um, this is the, so the source of uh, the uh, differences of opinion. Uh, our opponents are basically calling fracturing everything on the screen when, in fact, it's just way down at the bottom in terms of here where the fracturing is, two miles down and so on. But you have to do proper cementing. Um, you've got to go down through the aquifer so that you don't have water issues and so on. Uh, it's got, and we've got a bunch of things that are designed to be able to make sure that that's accomplished. Uh, there are chemicals used. Most of them are household chemicals. They're a small amount relative to the water and sand, which is 99% that's used on that. Uh, things like acids and biocides and so on. And these chemicals are all available. If you want to know what's going in, uh, there are MSDS sheets that tell you what's being used on a site. We have a, a website called Frac Focus where the chemicals are listed. Uh, so this is not a mystery, but you know you have silly statements about the Halliburton loophole and other such nonsense that's basically the opposition to uh, developing oil and gas is using. Uh, we believe that fracturing is regulated. You've got a whole host of measures that are in place in terms of different agencies, and you've seen some of these before. Uh, you know, people will argue, oh, it's, it's just not regulated. All wells are not. No, they're covered by virtually any type of uh, thing that the EPA or other places are regulated. So the issue is, what do you want to do in terms of either supporting responsible development or slowing it down? Um, there has never been an instance where the fracturing itself has contaminated water. The deep down fracturing has contaminated water. Now, if you don't do the proper casing at the top, you can have gas migration, you can have problems, and that's unacceptable. But the fracturing itself has never caused an issue, and here's the quotes that demonstrate that. Okay, so how about water? Well, we use, we use quite a bit of water, but not as much as other activities. So this notion somehow that uh, it's going to, in places like Pennsylvania, that are going to be, uh, you know, you just don't have enough water to do it, or silly. I mean, if you look down at Marcellus Shale, you can see how it racks up with, say, power generation as alone. Yes, it's got to be managed. It is a lot of water. 
but uh, you know, we've got to be able to deal with it. Okay, so what are we as an industry doing? Well, API has been in the business of generating best practices, recommended practices, a uh, whole host of standards and quality programs and so on for the industry since the 1920s. And we have these types of guest guidance and best practices for hydraulic fracturing. You have these potential in terms of dealing with water, in terms of flow zones, environmental protection issues and so on. So we as an industry have embraced that you've got to do this and do it right. And our position is if you don't do it right, if you break the rules, you should be fined and shut down. But nevertheless, let's be uh, real honest about who it is. And then we have a host of many, many other practices that API does that deal with oil and gas. So this is, a, this is a industry that knows what it's doing. It's been doing it for 150 years. Uh, states have been, <clears throat> excuse me, regulating uh, uh, oil and gas activities for over a century. So there's nothing new about a lot of these things. Uh, there are issues you've got to deal with in terms of like salt uh, and so on, because much of the water that comes back uh, is highly salty. It's got to be managed properly. Uh, we've got to be able to treat it and dispose it properly and so on. And for example, in, in Pennsylvania now, you can't put uh, this fluids into the municipal systems anymore. Uh, you've got to manage it under the whole uh, uh, EPA regulations and so on. We support disclosure of the chemicals, uh, no question about it. What we don't support is disclosure of the actual formulas, the proprietary business information. Because companies have spent hundreds of millions of dollars developing those formulas, just like Coca-Cola, and you don't have the formula for Coca-Cola, but everybody drinks it every day. But we, we clearly support disposal of the chemical uh, identities and so on, but just not the proprietary business information. Now, we've also got to be honest as an industry, this is an industrial activity. When you're starting to do well drilling, you've got a big structure that's set up that uh, you know, uses probably somewhere in the order of about, uh, oh, I guess, 10 acres or something like that. It's an industrial activity. You're going to have removal, you're going to have roads, you're going to have a whole host of things that you've got to um, understand. And so as both you all advising home landowners who are looking to lease their lands and so on, you've got to go in with your eyes wide open because it is an industrial activity. There's transportation issues, a little water. There's trucks issues. There's school bus interaction issues. There's a whole host of things that the communities and the industry have to work together on. But nevertheless, once you've got this process done, uh, and it is a, a um, this is actually a fracking site, if you haven't gone to a hydraulic fracturing site, I'd recommend as an elected official to do it because you will be woefully underwhelmed. All you'll see is a bunch of pipes and nothing else going on. And so it's not exploding. It's not, you know, it's clearly an industrial and uh, an activity that you've got to be cautious about. But it's basically a lot of pipes pumping water around. So it's not some scary Frankenstein movie. When you're done, you know, you have to put the veg vegetation back. You're probably left with about a two-acre pad where the wells are. Uh, <clears throat> it'll be uh, seeded over. And eventually, once you're just left with the wells with the pipes and so on, you won't be able to see much anymore. But nevertheless, it is an industrial activity. So let me quick turn to employment. This is a big employee, employee generator. In Pennsylvania, you have both the direct activity in terms of the well drilling itself, you got the indirect activity of the suppliers, and you've got what we call induced, which is all the communities around there. So everybody who's selling things from sandwiches or car dealers or whatever to, in, in the communities involved, it is a big job producer. And as I'd like to say, I drove through north central Pennsylvania. I grew up dirt poor country boy in the hills of Pennsylvania, and we had seismic crews going up and down all those highways, and I always wondered what they found. Well, now we know but uh, they didn't have the technology to be able to develop it. And so when I drive back through that neck of the woods, which is a very rural area with population densities of about two per square mile, uh, I see something that I never saw growing up, help wanted signs. And that's really what it brings to these communities that haven't seen it. So that somebody coming out of high school who, who uh, doesn't go to college can make $70,000 and support a family. And that's really what's important. You know, I was fortunate. I got to college, but not everyone is. And that's what's really meaningful. And so if you look broadly across the US economy, the oil and gas industry supports 9.2 million jobs. We're 7.7% .7 of the gross domestic product. We're a big industry, and we can contribute more. This just breaks out all the different types of industries that are affected in terms of natural gas, oil and natural gas. And so it's not just the, the roughnecks, it's not just the, the drivers, it's everybody can benefit in terms of this development. The shale formation, this is Marcellus. I'm from just to the left of that sign, Hughesville, that's where I grew up. 
And that's really wonderful economic activity, but it's got to be measured. Williamsport, which was really only known as being the home of Little League Baseball, now is the seventh fastest growing uh, town in the country. You know, so it, the benefits are there, and they've got to be managed. These are the wells that are drilled, just a massive number, probably 2,000 this year. Uh, Pennsylvania has a long history of oil and gas to the west. Now at the east, we've got that. And that's been some of our problems. We started producing oil and gas areas that had never seen it, and so people wondered what's going on, and they, you know, if you don't properly tell them, they can be concerned about it legitimately. This is the economic impact, thousands of jobs in Pennsylvania alone. Uh, you've got value added in the sense of wage income, you've got taxes, federal taxes, really wonderful, wonderful things that can be developed from it. So there are th places you can go. <clears throat> if you want to understand kind of more things about it, I suggest you go to some of these uh, websites and so on. They'll tell you everything, uh, uh, a whole lot of things about the industry and what's going on. You can come to our website, api.org, and you can get more information on that. Uh, and let me close. We're going to need this natural gas. I hear an argument from some folks, oh, we should spend all our time on renewables. Well, we're going to need renewables, no question about it, but we're going to need this natural gas and oil. This is a, how complex our energy economy is. It was used in an earlier session and so on. And we're going to continue to need it because if you look at, for example, how energy is used down the left-hand side or how it's produced and down the right-hand side how it's used, we're going to need everything. Or as uh, Frank Kameni said, everything, everywhere, all the time. So um, looking forward, it's going to continue to grow. And we have the choice as a society. We can either do responsible economic development of oil and gas, generate jobs, revenue, and uh, improve our energy security, or we can repeat the mistakes of the past. And that's what the proposals in Washington are right now, to tax the industry and repeat Jimmy Carter's mistakes, where Carter's administration raised taxes, reduced production, increased imports, destroyed jobs, and then they poured the money down the drain on things that didn't work. That sounds oddly familiar right now. So we have a choice going forward. We can generate a million jobs. So uh, let's, let's make a wise choice going forward, both in terms of the fracturing in your areas, the development of oil and gas, but also na nationwide, and we can really improve as an economy right now. So let me close, and thank you very much for your time.